Hey everybody, it's Mr. Carr again. Today we're going to be looking at 2.3 day one. Um, the goal today is to solve a quadratic equal to zero by using factory. Okay, so here's an example of a quadratic real quick. The goal with factor solving, I want to find these points right here. We're trying to find where it crosses the x-axis is the idea. Okay, so that's what we're going to find here. Now a couple of sub so vocab terms to talk about. Uh, real quick, if we talk about a monomial, there we go, a monomial that is describing something that looks like this, that is made up of what's called one term. Okay. Then we have a binomial. So the bi means two because we have two terms. And finally, the trinomial has one, two, three. That gives us three terms. These all fall all under all fall under the same blanket term, which is polynomials. And that just means many terms. Okay. So that's what we're looking at for these. So terms, remember, we will talk about terms. They're pieces of an expression. They are separated by addition or subtraction. Okay? That's a very common mistake that people make. They want to count things as being one term or two terms. If there are two terms, they're like two things multiplied together. So we have addition or subtraction signs separating these three is the idea. Okay? So back to the trinomial as a quick reminder. Um, oh, kind of, oh, okay, so this is based on our review from before. So if I do this real quick, x squared is x and x. Positive 20, negative in the middle is two negatives. So what multiplies to 20 adds to a negative nine. Um, nothing. It's not factorable, actually. Oh, sorry, no, never mind. Negative four, negative five. <laughs> okay. Next one, we got x and x. We got a negative 12 here and a positive in the middle. So that tells me it's a positive and a negative, and the positive should be bigger. And that's going to happen with, is it 6 and 2? No. 6 and 2 would give me 4. So if I did 6 and 2 here, that would be a 4x in the middle. And then if I go any bigger, whoa, hello. Don't want to do that. Um, so, yeah, that's actually going to be work. This is not factorable. Nothing multiplies to a negative 12 and adds to a positive 3. So we can move on from that one. Okay, we got x squared is x and x. Positive here with a negative in the middle. That's going to be two negatives then. Since that's two negatives, that's going to be a 10 and a 10 to give me my negative 20x in the middle. Over here, we got x and x. And then we got negative uh, 18 with a negative here. So it's, again, plus or minus. But now my negative value needs to be bigger, which means it's a negative six and a positive three. Okay. One second on that one. Okay. So a little bit more factoring practice. Remember with the certain binomials, if they are the difference of two squares, we can set this up as a, uh, a certain pattern. So for example, 9x squared minus 49, that is 3x plus 7, 3x minus 7. <clears throat> 121 minus m squared, 11 minus m, 11 plus m. So even though this one's an addition problem here, um, well, first of all, I'm going to factor out. I'm going to factor out a negative four, make it 25 minus p squared. Now it's a difference problem. I mean, technically, I could have just switched it to to make it a minus 100, but let's factor this negative four out because then I could factor it. <coughs> excuse me, as five plus p and five minus p. All right, so here's the big idea with today. If big question mark times a big question mark equals zero, then what do we know about these question marks? Or as a little bit, maybe smaller to write, if I know that I multiply two numbers together, A times B, and it, the answer has zero, the only way for that to work is either A equals zero or B equals zero. This is called the zero product property. Okay. Zero. So that's what our zero product property is telling us here. Now, the key here is it has to multiply to zero. Okay. That's the only way for me to make this work at this point. So if it's equal to zero, then we are allowed to do this because if we're multiplying and it comes out to zero, then again, the only way for that to work is if at least one of those numbers is zero. Okay. So that means Something like this. If x plus 3 times x minus 1 in my factor form equals 0, 
then the only way for that to work is that x plus 3 equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0, which means x is a negative 3 or x is a 1. Okay, that's our zero product property. So, oh, there it is right there. <laughs> so we're going to find our roots for this. Now, if you see the term roots, it has multiple meanings. It means roots, it means zeros, it means solutions. All of these terms kind of mean the same thing. And they all refer to this. We're finding where does our graph cross the x-axis, okay? which means we also can call them x-intercepts in all honesty. So in order to make this work with factoring, we've already got it equal to zero for this first example. So I'm going to go ahead and do my factoring now. If I have a quadratic that is, it is set equal to zero, now I want to put it into factored form so I can apply my zero product property. So I know x squared has to come from x and x, a negative 36 with a negative 5. I know it's got to be a plus and a minus, and this is my larger value. Uh, to make this work out here with a 36, that's going to be, we got 9 and 4. So negative 9 and a positive 4 works. So here's the part that's different from the previous lesson. Not only do we want to factor, we want to apply our zero product property. Either x plus 4 equals 0 or x minus 9 equals 0. So I subtract that over, I get x equals a negative 4. And I add 9 over, so I get x equals positive 9. Both of these are considered to be answers here. Let's do the same thing here. It's already equal to zero, so we're going to go ahead and go to the factoring. X squared has to come from X and X. We have a negative and a positive, so it's got to be two negatives. So in this case, to get a positive four and a negative four, it's got to be two negative twos. Now, I could split them up as two separate ones, but it doesn't really matter. They're the same thing. So in this case, I get one answer, and that is two. This one right here, the only thing I have to do different is I got to first make it equal to zero. So if I subtract this over to the other side, that's z squared minus 3z minus 54 equals 0. And now I can go to my factored form. So, oh, and then z and z go there. Negative and a negative, again, means a positive and a negative with my uh, negative value being a larger number. So we have multiplying negative 54, uh, looks like 9 and 6, yeah, negative 9 and a positive 6. So that means z plus 6 equals 0, z minus 9 equals 0. So z ends up being negative 6, and it also is a positive 9. So those are my two answers there. We can do some word problems, some very basic ones with our geometry idea. We're going to model the area of this rectangle. We know the area is 84, and it's made up of these two sides here. So remember, area is length times width for a rectangle. So in this case, 84 is equal to x plus 7 times x plus 2. Now, in this case, because I want it equal to 0, but then I got to refactor I got to factor it after it's equal to 0. So that's a key here. In order to do zero product property, we have to first make it equal to 0 before we do factoring. It's sort of already in factored form, so what I want to do here is distribute. So I'll have 84 is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 7x plus 14. We're going to combine these two together as well as subtract 84 to both sides. So it's x squared plus 9x minus 70. Am I doing that right? 14 minus 84? Yeah. Okay. Now we can go ahead and go to our factor form. So we have x and x here. Uh, multiplies to a negative 70 adds to a positive 9. So I'm going to use my net calculator a little bit with that one. So negative 70. So one thing to mention, I do have a plus and a minus. This will be the larger number now to get the positive 9 in the middle. So let's say negative 70 divided by 2 divided by 3. Uh, try 4, 5, yep, 5 and 14. So it's going to be a positive 14 and a negative 5. So that means 0 is equal to x plus 14. And also, 0 equals x minus 5. So I subtract this over here. So I get a negative 14 equals x. And I add this here. I get 5 for x. Now, in this problem, it says find the value of x. That's all I want. I don't want the negative 14. Negative 14 would give me negative lengths for my uh, rectangle here. Not realistic. So my only answer I'm going to say is x equals 5. 
If we want to go a little bit further and find what is the length, well, that's going to be 5 plus 7, giving me 12. In this case, it's going to be feet. And if I want the width, I'll do, I'm going to do 5 plus 2, which is going to give me 7 feet for that one. Okay. Finding the zeros of the function. So again, I already mentioned this earlier, but zeros are being used to mean the same thing as our... Um, zeros will be the same thing as our uh, uh, x-intercepts. It's our solutions. It's our roots. They all refer to the same idea. Okay. So we're basically finding our x-intercepts. So technically, functions have zeros, equations have roots, and graphs have x-intercepts. When you say potato, I say potato. It's a nice old reference for air. The idea is that we are we are still referring to the same thing. Where are our where is our graph crossing the x-axis? Okay. So if we want to do that here, if I'm not doing it with a graph, I can still just set y equal to zero. And I'm going to solve this out like we just did. So zero is equal to our factored form, that x and x. Two negatives means we have a plus and a minus, but this being the larger one, it's going to be a negative four and a positive three to make that work. So x plus three equals zero, x minus four equals zero. And x equals a negative three and x equals a four. Over here, our function equals zero. So that's x squared plus 12 x plus 36. So we go to our factored form. We got two positives now. And it's a little too close there. Okay. So we'll have two positives inside. Multiplies of 36 adds to 12. That's going to be a 6 and a 6. Once again, we are <clears throat> crossing the same thing here. So that's going to be x plus 6 equals 0. So x equals a negative 6. So I should say this. One more thing, because technically we're calling them zeros. They are our x-intercepts. If we're talking about in terms of a graph or in terms of a function like this, we should label them like that. Okay, we should label our zeros as x-intercepts. So it's negative three zero, four zero, and negative six zero. Keep in mind, this one's crossing twice, but this one's only crossing one time. Okay, so slightly different looks to their graphs. All right, last two. Um, yeah, so let's look at these real quick. These are a little bit weird but we can work through these real fast. Um, so this is from the homework, but let's do it together real fast. So seven X squared minus seven. One thing to always kind of look for, especially when we're solving, is that you can actually reduce a bit first if you have common factors. So in this case, my common factor here is seven. So if I use that seven, I can just divide everything here by a seven, whoops. So I get one X squared minus one equals zero. If I do my factoring now, I can do it as the difference of two squares. So that's x and x plus one and minus one. So x plus one equals zero, x minus one equals zero. So x equals a negative one and x equals one. Same thing here, I want to make this equal to zero. So I'll bring the 25x x over. It'll be minus 25x plus 30 equals zero. Instead of trying to factor right now, everything here is divisible by five. So let's do that real quick. So I get x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. And now it's much easier to work with. So I have for my factors x and x. Positive 6 here with a negative. That means it's two negatives, making it negative 2 and negative 3. So that means x minus 2 equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0. So x equals 2 and x equals 3. We try to sum up everything with today. One big idea. Zero product property. You have to have your quadratic equal to zero first, then you can factor them, and then you can separate them into two different answers to solve out. But that is it for today. Take care, everyone. Oops, sorry for that.